Hey folks, this is Vince with Ads Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to play Atrium. It's important to stress that what you're looking at here is a preview build, so everything that you're about to see is subject to change. So I've played two games off-camera, and based on what I've seen so far, this game is heavily inspired by the board game Carcassonne. For those of you that don't know that game, it's available in both board game and digital form. Players take turns laying down tiles, and if they want to, they can place a meeple onto the tile that they've placed. And by closing off roads and castles and surrounding uh, coisters with uh, all tiles around it, you'll be able to remove your meeples and earn points. Well, Atrium, it's like the designer of this game said, you know what, I really like Carcassonne. Let's make a game almost exactly like it, but add a couple of extra things. Like, for example, this game has a barracks that you can put down, um, there's watchtowers, uh, treasure rooms, different things like that that will score you extra points or give your units more attack power, whatever that is. My only complaint, while there is an in-game tutorial, the game doesn't cover, as far as I've seen, what attack power actually does. So I think what this game needs is, in addition to the in-game tutorial, I think there needs to be... A reference on the main menu here, like a little guide explaining what everything is, and if someone wants to look up something specific, they'll be able to do that. So I really hope the developer adds something like that to the main menu here, because I was left scratching my head one or two times because I'm like, okay, I, I have an archer, I put him down, but what's this attack power that I supposedly get? I, I, you know, there's little things like that that I have questions that I can't find the answer to, and the game doesn't do a good enough job explaining it. So anyway, um, if you hit play, there's no online play as far as I can see. What you're going to do is you're going to toggle between the game controller and the PC. Now, it, it's not what you think. It's not like, okay, one player uses a game pad and the other one... Um, there may be local multiplayer. I haven't checked. Uh, there is... Oh, there is pass and play. I guess you could do that. So, for example, if I wanted to do green and red as a two-player game, let's uncheck blue and yellow. So right now, I'd be passing and playing between green and red right now. So if you have friends over and you want to play this with them, you can, but there's no online element to this. You can play against the AI opponent by switching it from the gamepad to the PC here. The PC symbol means computer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play as blue, and I'll just have the computer play as red, and I'll do a short game and show tutorial, quick turn, competition. I don't know what these are. There's no tooltip for competition. I don't know what that means. Um, 100 is the number of tiles that you'll be laying down in order to end the game. There's short 100, normal is 500, and long game is 1,000. Um, short game, let's go do that. And I don't even know if we're going to get through all of it. So, like I said, with the tutorial enabled, there are tooltips that pop up from time to time, but there are some things that are a little lacking. So um, I'm just going to skip past this stuff, and I'll show you what I know. If you've played Carcassonne, you're about 85% of the way to learning this game. So uh, you'll be fine there. So what you can do, um, you have a set of meeples down here, including a king. The king lets you play again one more time if you play a tile on his territory. So that's, that's a cool little feature there. So if I were to put this king down and put a castle... Uh, if I put a castle down, then a king on top of it, like if I had something like this, and I put the, I can select what meeple I want to put down, and if I put that there, now that's not going to do anything really here because I've, I'm, I'm closing it off. Whenever you close, whenever you wall off a castle completely, you remove all meeples from it and you score points. So in this case, I've completely closed this off and turn, and there you go. So I've earned some. I've earned some. Now, with the king, because I put the king down there, I get an extra turn, uh, which is nice. Like I said, the king will allow you to take an extra turn. So by playing the king and walling this off, um, I've got an extra turn. So at this mage tower, um, I can drop a meeple onto the mage tower. If you close the territory, your meeple will become a mage. So um, I can do something like that. I can put a meeple on top of it. And now I can try to close this off, which is a little bit harder because there's no walls here. And I'll just enter. All right, so the AI put a wall here, put a meeple down, walled it off, and he got to take it back. Um, I will 
do something like that and I'll put my king down here and in turn um, road tile all right let's let's show you what that's all about if you completely close off a road um, like for example this whoop, zoomed in too far this is the edge like this indicates an edge this this little center here this ends the road so if I were to completely wall off this road like from beginning to end there's still a little bit here that i'd have to wall off but i don't know if i'm going to be able to do that with this wall piece being here but um i'm trying to find a nice long stretch of road that i can wall off um so maybe something like that and then if i can wall this off up here or just street it off uh end the road i'll get a ton of points so i'm gonna throw a meeple there uh your roads can be attacked by thieves until you finish them now again I'm scratching my head. What are thieves? How do they come about? Where do they come from? Um, how do I get a thief? Yeah, again, an, an in-game reference of some sort would be nice. Uh, cathedral. The cathedrals... Drop a meeple onto the cathedral to turn him into a pilgrim. Pilgrims double points from a road but have no defense against attack. So I may... Well, I don't know if I'm going to be able to put that there. Um, I could do... Let's do this. I'm going to put the cathedral here. And this is technically a start and an end. So I'm going to put a meeple down. And then I'm going to take it right back. Again, if you've played Carcasson, you'll be very familiar with this. Um, okay, so I may want to build off this. Hmm. If I... Oh, there we go. So I can, I can put this here. I'm going to put my meeple there. Now, normally in Carcasson... Once you have, once you have someone on a road, you won't be able to put any more on there. Um, so, but this game's a little different. You can continue putting meeples into the same castle, onto the same road. You just can't share that with your opponent. So my opponent can't put meeples down on a road that I'm already on, or a castle that I'm already on. So it's slightly different from Carcassonne, in the sense that in this game, you can put multiple meeples down onto one location, and you score for each one that you remove. So in this case, I've got a road that ends here, or starts here, and ends here. So I'm going to get a ton of points for this right here. Boom. Okay. Um, I'd like to start getting this walled off. I really would. Um, actually, you know what? Let's do something like that and go in this direction. I'm going to put a meeple there. Uh, sure. One extra turn. Okay, so if I... Let's do all that and turn. There we go. So I've just scored that. Drop a meeple onto the alchemist layer to turn him into a berserker for six turns. The berserker will find the closest meeple of any color and attack it. Okay. Um, that's assuming that... Hmm. I, well, I, I want to build off this if I can. I'm going to just throw it right on top of that. Uh, I guess I should have put that over... Well, I don't think that would have mattered. I don't see any meeples around here. Okay. Um, drop a meeple on the outpost to prevent a player to, to place a meeple on adjacent tiles. So if I want to prevent him from building stuff, like maybe over here, I could do that. Oh, I'll just throw one there. Yeah, so this guy is obviously not going to do anything. Over 9,000 attacks. <laughs> um, but in theory, like maybe... If he had a red meeple somewhere nearby, he would have been beaten up. But again, little things like that need to be explained better, I think. Okay, so let's... Um, what am I doing now? Let's start a new castle, I guess. Put that... Actually, let's put our king there. Undo. Okay. And another alchemist layer. I, I don't think I... Yeah. I could just wall this off right now and do that. Um, you know, I'm going to put my mage there, I guess. And maybe we'll just wall this off. I'll put my king down there. So I'm creating all these little mini castles, getting some points. Upper left-hand corner is the points. I'm in blue. Computers in red there. Uh, there's 36 tiles left. Um, let's see if we can't... I'd like to score on this road here. That would be nice. Uh, so maybe I'll put 
something there. And can I... No, can't put that there. Prison. Place the prison on an enemy's castle to remove one meeple at random. Um... Okay, there's no... Oh, I can put this over here. There we go. He's got a red meeple right there. Um... <laughs> the classic Wilhelm scream. Um, barracks. Drop a meeple on the barracks, and if you close the territory, your meeple will become an archer. Archers have one attack point for every guard tower in the... T Again, I'm not familiar with how attack works in this game. Like, it, it's not ex exactly explained all that well. Um, I don't know if we're ever going to get to it, though. I'll do it anyway, but... Actually, let's put a, a uh, king down on that. It makes sense to put my special characters on these tiles so that I get more benefits from them. Um, oh, you know what? If I can close this... I'll get a ton of points. Let's do that. And end turn. Nice. Bunch for that road. I closed these roads here and scored some points. Um, yeah, let's try and close these off if at all possible. Uh, undo. Yeah, let's do something like that. I'll put my person there. And I can... Art or rotate, by the way. I'll put this guy there. Trying to close this off before the end of the game. I've got six tiles remaining. I don't know if it's going to happen. Uh, no, closing this is going to be difficult right here. So that may not happen. Okay, now in this case, um, I'll do that. Now I'm pretty sure I would outnumber him, so I think he gets kicked out. Yeah, okay. Now I wonder if that's what the attack is all about. If you've got an archer in here... Um, he'll do, and whenever you combine territories like that, um, and they duel like that, then maybe that's where the attack power comes in. But again, without sort of any explanation, it's kind of hard to really say. Um, looking for some easy points here uh, before the end of the game hits. So maybe something like that. I could put a meeple there. There we go. I've got some points. And this is it. So let's just throw this down and end the game. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think, yeah, this would have been nice to end the game with, but unfortunately I can't do it. All right, so I'll just throw that there. Fine. Final score. Biggest castle tied. I got the longest road. So I got 86 points to his 49 and I won the game. So, like I said, it's not bad. It's like, if you've played Carcassonne and you enjoy it, then you may like this one too. Um, again, I, I just, I think there needs to be some sort of in-game reference book to explain some of the finer points, but all in all, not bad. If you guys haven't already, subscribe to me on Twitch and YouTube, that way you can stay up to date with any new content I've been to publish. This is Vince, thanks for watching, and I'll